So I wasn't alive in the 60s or the 70s. I didn't actually make it here till the 80s. But I do have eclectic music tastes and listen to a lot of music from the 60s. So today I bring you 13 facts about music from the 60s that you probably didn't know. Number one, the Beatles had 12 songs in the top 100 for the week of April 4th, 1964. Number two, the Motown Record Corporation was based in Detroit and started by former car factory worker Barry Gordy. Number three, Phil Spector's Wall of Sound was one of the first attempts to use the recording studio as an instrument in its own right. This was not just a recording technique, but arguably a musical ideology. Characterized by high sounding, loud reverberating instruments, which constantly threatened to drown out the vocals, the revolutionary technique was used on songs such as You've Lost That Loving Feeling by The Righteous Brothers, River Deep Mountain High by Ike and Tina Turner, Let It Be by The Beatles, Then I Kissed Her by The Beach Boys, and Then He Kissed Me by The Crystals. Number four, the studio band The Wrecking Crew are featured on many important recordings in music. They worked with producer Phil Spector to achieve his wall of sound, which is present on many songs that were popular in the 1960s. Number five. In 2015, a new species of damselfly was discovered in Africa. The scientists who discovered it ended up naming the new species Uma Guma after Pink Floyd's 1969 experimental album, Uma Guma. Number six. Ann Bullock had moved to St. Louis, Missouri from Brownsville, Tennessee. She began attending the predominantly African-American nightclub, Manhattan Club, in East St. Louis, Illinois, where she saw the Kings of Rhythm led by Ike Turner for the first time. Fast forward about three years, Ike scheduled his band to record the song he wrote titled A Fool in Love for singer Art Lassiter. Lassiter failed to show up for the recording session at Technosonic Studios in St. Louis. Having already booked the studio time, Ike allowed Bullock to record the song as a demo with Lassiter's backing vocalists. During a gig at the Manhattan Club, Ike played the record, which caught the attention of a local DJ, who asked him to send the record to Juggy Murray, the president of Sun Records in New York. Murray was impressed by Bullock's vocal delivery and bought the rights to the song. Murray offered Ike a $20,000 advance, convincing him to keep Bullock's vocals on the record and suggested that he make her the star of his show. This prompted Ike to rename her Tina Turner. He then trademarked the name for protection so that if she left, he could hire another female artist and have her perform under the moniker Tina Turner. Number seven, Woodstock was a musical festival held August 15th through 18th, 1969 on Max Yasker's dairy farm in Bethel, New York. More than 400,000 were in attendance. Number eight, the British invasion is the name given to a period of time in the early to mid 1960s, during which many British rock bands and pop artists found mainstream success in the United States. Number nine, he has won 10 Grammy Awards. However, Bob Dylan has never had a number one hit on the Billboard charts. Number 10. Neil Young is a Canadian singer-songwriter. He moved to Los Angeles where he formed the band Buffalo Springfield with Stephen Stills and others. Young had released two solo albums and three albums as a member of Buffalo Springfield by the time he joined Crosby, Stills and Nash in 1969, changing the name of the band to Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Number 11. The first Billboard Hot 100 number one single of the 1960s was a country song called El Paso by Marty Robbins. Number 12. The 27 Club is not a club that you probably want to be part of. It's made up of musicians who died too soon, all at the age of 27.
1987. Some of the first members of this club are Rudy Lewis of the Drifters, who sang lead on songs such as On Broadway, Some Kind of Wonderful, and Up on the Roof. He died in 1964. Brian Jones is the founder and original leader of the Rolling Stones. He died in 1969. Other people who joined this unfortunate group after the 1960s were Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Ron Pigpen McKernan, Jimi Hendrix, and Kurt Cobain. And number 13, the Beatles featured two left-hand members. But while Paul McCartney played the bass and guitar as a lefty, Ringo Starr played the drums as a right-handed drummer would. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this journey back in time as much as I did. Hopefully you learned something. I'm pretty sure you did. If you liked this video, could you throw me a thumbs up, maybe subscribe? And hey, if you liked it, maybe your friends would too. So go ahead and share this video. Until next time, have a great day and be kind to one another.